Hello YouTube, I'm back in again with another video. Though we're going to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And this time it's a non-custom deck. You're hoping for something unique, but uh, I'm going to be playing something a lot slower and convenient. The deck that I'm playing happens to be a Cosmo Dogmatica deck. My opponent happens to be the, playing Magical Musketeers, but I was surprised to see this, that he has Ecclesia. So now I can assume that my opponent's playing Magical Musketeer Dogmatica as, as his uh, archetype. So... And on Dogmatica is niche, but I start off pretty slow considering it was my first turn. Even though these are really strong cards, I have Dogmatica, Punishment set on my field, I have Ash Boss in my hand. Although these disrupt a lot of plays, but at the same time they can easily be negated. And it's not enough because I still my board is a lot smaller than his right now, so again it may it may not be a fast rate duel like the previous ones but here on out is to show you something different maybe you can improve them and i know for a fact magical musketeers they always have access to their spell traps as long as they're activated in the same column so regardless he can be able to activate his spell traps as long as he controls a magical musketeer on his field and then annoying is that he can special summon one from his deck in defense with starfire and now I'm, for sure i'm gonna negate it so he doesn't deal with even more damage because just imagine he'll be able to activate even more uh magical musket spell traps from his hand if he controls multiple so i want to be sure to prevent that i'm already on draw 10 can so hopefully this is definitely a great draw right now but although it's very slow like I said, this is going to be a fast rate duel, this is going to be a slow paced duel, so maybe you guys can gain some type of knowledge and learn from what's going to happen at this point on. So, I go into my main phase 1, I try to decide whether I want to summon Dark Destroyer, but I figure it'd be very reckless if I do, so I'm just going to go into my end phase and be patient. Though, I, uh, during my end phase, I pay 500, and I got to reveal 3 Cosmo Monsters or Cosmo cards with different names. But usually you just mean they're going to send the monsters instead, so I sent three, uh, I, I, I reveal three copies that have different names. So the most likely the card's going to be added, the card that's going to be added is Dark Eclipse, and I sent Dark Lady and just Dark Destroyer to my grave. Which I which I still think really helps, because I have one Dark Destroyer in hand and grave, so just in case, it's in Concerns Monster Reborn in my hand. So it gives me several opportunities to get into my Dark Destroyer, so I have ways of popping even more of my opponent's monsters, since this effect is not a once per turn. I remember back then, like, I think it was like 2015... I could be wrong, 2015 or 16, but th this attack used to be meta heavy. I'm not even kidding. Even though Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe it's because Yu-Gi-Oh wasn't that fast pace, and there weren't that many cards that could like uh, that could use anything besides targeting, because during that era, pretty much targeting was the was the majority of the cards that could pretty much get rid of Yu-Gi-Oh monsters uh, at the time. So. The reason that were they were so meta is because their their heavy boss monsters cannot be targeted by card effects. But now that you, that you figure they have ways of like ascending or tributing or destroying without having to target, especially with Raikou Kid Three, Dark Hole, and you have cards like Droplet. Now the deck is a lot weaker now, even though they have very strong effects and be able to um, floodgate out your the field. But then here and now, he'll be able to add a magical dusk musket. Like I said, they can activate. Not only can they activate from their hand, like during their turn while they control a magical musketeer monster that has a quick effect without having to set them. At the same time, they have additional effects where they can either add magical musket cards or musketeer cards from their deck to hand or special summon from their deck to the field. Which can be a nuisance, but then here, here, even some here he admits defeat because I think he realized that he doesn't have a card that can get rid of my Dark Destroyer. But that, that like I said, this is where, although they may not be meta, this, they can always come in handy if they're, they play a, if your opponent plays a deck that heavily targets monsters or spell traps. Just so you know, you you can always trust the uh, Cosmos to do that for you and get around. And not only that, even when they are destroyed by battle card effects, they, they, like, they flood the field with their own Cosmo monsters. Ones that have lower levels, it's being able to help you special to summon to another stronger Cosmo Monster. Or one that, that is, can help you in certain situations where you f feel that you need to be able to encounter those annoying, like, nuisance. 
because there are decks out there, yeah, they, they can easily get rid of the Cosmos, but just just so you know, does not mean this deck is completely pointless. And it still has its worth, it still has value, it just like as, as, as of this day on, it just can't continue with the upcoming meta, because now they have ways of playing a lot faster, using other card effects besides targeting that can possibly get rid of your monsters. So you have to be aware of that too, and then you can always swap out for this deck. This this deck, to be honest, is mainly for fun. Like the reason why I even want to showcase you this duel, like not every, not every, not the majority of Yu-Gi-Oh decks, they're not entirely he heavy on the meta. They are rogue decks. I would consider this a rogue deck, like that the deck I'm playing and the deck I'm up against. Yeah, like they don't do they. It seems like they they don't do too much, but they can still like they still have plays. They can still be able to play consistently, they can still be able to count certain cards, but the only issue is that the reason why it does not compete with the meta because they don't ha easily have access to really broken monsters, they don't have really broken monster effects, um, they may, they may manage to summon stronger monsters, but it takes some time to do that, so sometimes the Yu-Gi-Oh is why people even rely on the meta because they want better opportunities, they want a chance to summon their, their, mon their, their strongest monsters a lot more frequently. And then if they do that, they can also build, surround their, their, their boss monster with Omni Negates. Whether it's their set spell and trap cards, or there's monsters from their hand, or, extra, or main deck, or extra deck. Whatever they feel can help them out and get out of sticky situations. Considering this deck can't do that, I would, I would if you, if you, but if again, if you decide not to play heavy meta, this, this, is, this, this is definitely a deck worth playing if you decide to go rogue instead. And again, I hope you guys enjoy the duo. Be sure to check for more upcoming content later in the future. Be sure to check your notifications, comment, like, subscribe. Thank you.